This is Fagit Alekperov, the richest man in Russia. He is the CEO of Lukoil, the largest oil company in Russia. From humble beginnings to the pinnacle of success, Alekperov's journey is extraordinary. Lukoil started as a small company, but Alekperov transformed it into one of the largest oil companies in the world. In this video, we will explore how he became the richest man in Russia, and we will reveal the secrets of why many people became billionaires in a short time during the collapse of the Soviet Union. Let's dive into the life of Vagit Alekperov. First, we need to start with his childhood. Vagit Alekperov was born in Baku, Azerbaijan. He came from humble beginnings. His father worked in the oil fields. When Vagit's father died, he decided to follow his footsteps. He went to get education at Azerbaijan Oil and Chemistry Institute. After graduation, he got a job in the Western Siberia. He was really good and passionate about oil, and that made him climb the positions in the company. In 1985, he became first deputy general director of Pashnev, an oil production company. Two years after that, he became the general director of a newly made oil company called Kugalim Neft and Gas. He boosted their output from 15 million barrels in 1987 to 240 million barrels in 1990. Alekperov did that by integrating three branches of the business, exploration, refining and distribution. That success caught the attention of the Soviet government, and he was invited to be deputy minister of oil and gas. Everything went amazing for Alekperov. New job position, tons of money in his pocket, but an announcement in 1991 would change his life. It was 25th December 1991. Mikhail Gorbachev announced his retirement, and no successor was in line. So that meant the collapse of the Soviet Union. A politician named Boris Yeltsin saw an opportunity to take power, and some capable people saw an opportunity to get extremely rich. Yeltsin wanted to transform the country to a free market as soon as possible. Better said, transform it from communism to capitalism. In a free market economy, you can't have the state running major industries. But Boris didn't have time to set a proper infrastructure for the transformation. He removed price and currency control, made international trade easy, and started the privatization of the country. Now how to make businesses that are government-owned, privately owned, in a communist country where people don't have money, but not let outsiders invest and buy all the companies? They came up with the idea of vouchers. See, the companies would be split into three thirds. One third would be government owned. The other one third would be open for outside investments. And the last part would be owned by the workers with these vouchers. Vouchers were basically shares of the company. The idea was for workers to convert the vouchers in the company they worked for. The problem was, this was easy to abuse. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, if you got your wage, you would be happy. So many people starved. These vouchers were equivalent to around $30, which was then one month's wage. So most people sold their vouchers so that they could survive. People who were smart enough to use these vouchers made great returns. Meaning, if you could pay for workers' salaries, you would own the company. But the vouchers would be acquired often through dishonest practices. What did Alec Perel have to do with this? Everything. When he realized that the Soviet Union would fall, he connected with Boris Yeltsin, who in return granted Vajit to consolidate Russian oil businesses in the most profitable part of Russia. That's how he created Lukoil. He merged three big oil producers in the region. Alek Perov and other soon-to-be oligarchs bought out the workers. And when Boris Yeltsin needed to raise money for his re-election campaigns, they made a deal with him to buy out the government's shares of Lukoil. This is how he acquired the company, but this is only the beginning. Still, he had huge problems with Lukoil that could soon bankrupt the company and lose everything. The equipment was old. The oil production was horrible if we compare it to the West, because of old Soviet equipment. In 1990, he visited British petroleum facilities in the UK. It's reported that Alekperov asked the executives to explain how a modern oil company should be set up. He also looked at the companies in the West and started to understand their way of business and implement that way to look oil. With that, he managed to strike a deal with Chevron. The deal was to sell 70,000 barrels of oil to Chevron and use the revenue as a collateral for a $700 million loan from a Japanese company. That $700 million was used to replace old Soviet equipment. 
With new equipment, everything changed. Soon, Lukoil would achieve record profitability. Today, Lukoil is the second biggest company in Russia. They own 1.3% of global oil reserves and make 2.3% global oil production. They operate in over 40 countries. In the year 2000, they acquired the Getty Oil and its 1,300 gas stations in the US. Luke Oil owns seven oil processing companies in the Eastern Europe with a combined annual capacity of 82.1 million tons. In Russia, the company owns significant refineries in Volograd, Perm, Nitsky, Novograd and Ukta, as well as smaller refineries in Urai and Kogalim. Additionally, it owns refineries in Bulgaria and Romania and holds a 75% stake in an oil refinery complex in the Netherlands. Look Oil was the first Russian oil company with a vertical integrated structure, which means they control production and distribution, which transformed them from a regional player to a global player. Look Oil constantly invests in new technologies. But what's up with Vagit Alekperov? It's not official, but we can say that he has retired. He stopped being the president of Look Oil in 2022. The same year, he also stepped down from Hessen Yacht, a super yacht builder company that he owned. Some people assume that's because of the chairman incident that happened in the same year. Chairman of Lokoil, Ravel Magnov, fought from a hospital window, and another board member, Alexander Subotin, had died an unusual death. Magnov criticized the attack on Ukraine. Now, we are a business channel, so we don't want to get into politics. Alek Perov is a football fan. He owned 36.8% in one of the largest football clubs in Russia, Spartak Moscow. His hobby is numismatics. He likes to collect currencies, and according to reports, he owns one of the three largest private collections in Russia. Vagit Alek Perov, together with his allies, built one of the largest privately owned oil companies in the world and became the richest man in Mother Russia. His determination and passion for oil and business put him in this position. Also, some help from the government. Due to sanctions and the situation the world is in right now, Blue Oil is growing and we can see that there is no way of stopping Alekperov to raise his wealth.